Since we don't have a shot timer out here, I'll be your shot timer. You're gonna be you're gonna be the beep. I'm really good at this. Because you know I can't shoot without the beep. I can time it perfectly. You're got, down to a hundredth of a second. I have an algorithm. Well, I have well an algorithm calibrated in my head. All right, awesome. Let's do it. Beep. I don't think that I could have taken any more than what we had at that exact point. They were thinking that it was gonna be easy. They had no idea that I had the gauntlet prepared for them. At that moment, I was panicking inside. There isn't no crying in real life. It's just kind of hard balancing those emotions in the moment. Like in the moment, it's not constructive criticism and it's not coaching. To me, it's like, like you're picking on me. Someone is really trying to hurt you, trying to end your life. There is no room for crying. I'm afraid to fight somebody. I'm not gonna let this person beat me. All right, hey folks, welcome to the range. It is cold and wet and miserable. Reminds me of good old Fort Lewis back in the day. I'm joined by Battle Gnome Actual. Uh, Paul, I get a uh, question all the time. Hey, if I only had a limited amount of ammo, what in the world should I be doing it on? And so Paul and I uh, intend to teach you just that. We haven't really talked about this in advance of like, hey, if you're only given your 50 rounds, what are you gonna do with them? Before we even get started, I will tell you, I'm gonna break open the Fiocchi ammo and I'm gonna take one out and do not shoot one. You will shoot 49 because you never wanna leave the range without an extra bullet, right? <laughs> What if, what if they come for you? You know the they. You got it. Got to have that one last. And round. I'll have it. You would have shot all fifty, right? I would have shot all fifty and your extra one that you left sitting around. Then I would. It's I'm gonna Barney Fife this right here. <laughs> Boom. So anyway, what we're gonna do out here on the range is Paul's gonna say, hey, if if he only had fifty rounds, how's he gonna use it? And I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna let Paul go first, though. Cool. Even when we can get our hands on all the ammo we want, what we want to do is maximize our training time and efficiency, right? Yep. So for me. Uh, personally and it's going to vary on it's going to vary based on your skill level right like if you've already kind of got some uh, some basic pistol skills you're not uh, accuracy is kind of dialed in and it's more weapons manipulation building hand speed uh, and working mechanics of your drawn presentation reload in order to be as efficient and fast as possible for me with limited training time limited ammunition if i got a box of 50 rounds it's going to be a one reload one drill Okay, where I'm able to draw, fire one round, go to slide lock, execute a slide lock reload, and then re-engage with another round. So I'm looking at draw speed, I'm looking at uh, my reload speed, weapon manipulation, and then from there, I can bend down, I can police up that empty magazine, set the drill up again, and work the mechanics of a tactical reload when I'm doing that. Copy. So to me, that compresses a lot of skills into just a two round course of fire. Right. And with a box of 50 rounds, we get 25 solid repetitions of that drill. Yeah, because you got the draw, you got the emergency reload, so you got those two weapon manipulations, and then you're checking your targets to make sure you're hitting uh, well. What range would you want to be at? So it, it depends on uh, depends on what you've got available, but uh, I'd say a one reload, one drill. I think seven yards is good. If you want to work that, you can work it back further if you want. Obviously, we're closer up. It's going to be a little bit faster, but guys tend to cheat the drill a little bit and do a little bit of point shooting if they start racing the shot timer too much True. and trying to they're more worried more about speed than they are about really uh, you know dialing in their accuracy and making sure that they're getting good hits on target it's simple it's lots of weapon manipulation and you're doing accuracy it's a it's a good thing to pass on. Uh, for my part, uh, where I'm at, I really want to major more on weapon manipulation stuff. And for a lot of my stuff, I can just do dry fire. So I'd really encourage and just take this moment of like, hey, ammo scarcity, dry fire, dry fire, dry fire. And now since ammo is so scarce, it's a good opportunity to engage in other parts of the gunfight, mainly the fight part. And I mean, hey, get in, start engaging more in martial arts. Ammo is scarce, but martial arts stuff, you can immediately start doing that. Uh, for me, I'd rather just address what are the, my uh, most scary concerns I'm trying to address. And that's one, I get kind of ambushed. And I'm like, whoa, and I got to uh, solve that problem, the get off me kind of problem. So I want to do some quick draw close to the target, move and uh, shoot. So I'm going to practice that a good bit, dry fire, and then I'll go hot. And then the other thing is, what if I had to take a, a low percentile shot at a distance, so I'll also do that. 
uh, and uh, probably work around cover and concealment some. So I think I'm gonna be a little bit more mobile where you're a little bit more skills focused. Uh, folks, you're gonna really have to figure out what in the world are you trying to accomplish and where are you at your journey? Paul is already really well down the trail and so what he wants to refresh and work on may not be what you do. If your fundamentals are just crap, guess what you're doing with your 50 rounds? Just fundamentals of fire. That's it. Of like, you gotta get that right. And so that's a good thing for you to be able to do. If it's already pretty good, then you warm it up and then you move on to some sticky point that you're very likely to need if you got caught on the X. Just know the, what we're doing doesn't necessarily apply to you. So let's run through this and uh, see what we can all glean together from shooting on a limited ammo budget. Here we go. All right, so one reload, one drill, guys. Uh, like we talked about before, limited ammunition, limited training time. This is gonna be more of a static skill building drill where we're compressing a bunch of skills into a single drill to maximize our training efficiency. The way we set this up, one round in the magazine, Go ahead, load. So we're set up with one round in the chamber, empty magazine in the weapon. We know it's gonna force a reload after we fire that first round. So we're gonna work draw presentation. We're gonna execute that emergency reload. When the gun goes to slide lock, we'll re-engage with one round. Then we'll set it back up again. I'll show you how we do that, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk through this. So draw and presentation, engage with one round, execute slide lock reload, re-engage. All right, now we're gonna bend down purchase this magazine to set up for the drill again. I'm gonna execute attack reload now. So I've worked draw on presentation, I've worked slide lock reload, I've worked a little bit of muzzle awareness and positional changes to bend down, grab that empty magazine, and then set it up with attack reload. So I've built a lot of different skills in there yeah. to a single drill, only fired two rounds. We can work that 25 times with that 50 round box of ammunition. At least that's how I was taught how to do math, right? Yeah, because of the carry the two, Think so. High reciprocal. Do you dislike anything about the one-in-one -one drill? So sure. So some of the things that can happen when you're when you're running this drill, uh, especially if you start working on the shooting timer, you start really pushing speed. Guys can start cheating it a little bit. You can really, if you know you're only firing one round, you can get a sloppy grip and you can rip that first round out yeah. pretty fast. And you can cheat it because you know you don't have to worry too much about your recoil management, which is where a grip comes into play. And you start so, gaming the reload. You yep. start gaming it. So yep. you're just ripping it out there. You get that first round, execute a real quick reload, re-engage again. And right. you can get away with a lot if you're only firing a single round. Uh, yep, and I guess I'm saying the same thing a little bit different. The only thing I dislike, and I think this is a fantastic use of 50 rounds, of course, this is great, 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 great. Uh, but it's, why would you draw and immediately go empty sure. and have to reload? Right. And that's nonsense. And then you'd counter back with, well, it's skill set building, bro. Right. I'm like, all right, that's a good point. Uh, so uh, do you start off real fast or you just kind of dry fire and then do 25, 50, 75? So, let's, so let's, let's assume that we've already done our dry practice, right, before okay. we got to the range. Um, you know, assume that you got your dry practice in because we can tell you all day long to dry practice. Everybody gets tired of hearing that, right? Dry practice, dry practice, dry practice. We're not talking about the dry practice. We're going to assume you already done your homework. We're out here on the range okay. now and want to get our 50 rounds out. Definitely don't want to start out, you know, the, the, the most inefficient way to accelerate a vehicle is to stomp on the gas. So you don't get out here and just try to come out the gate right off the rip trying to just blaze out. You want to start about 50% and slowly increase your hand speed, building efficiency and mechanics as opposed to just really trying to force that reload and get it out there. Got it. So start slow, work your way up to, you know, whatever you think your, your 80, 85% is, right? Yeah. Okay. And then maybe and then maybe at some point you start pushing past what your kind of known point of performance is to see if you can move that move that bar a little bit. Got it. Okay, very good. Cool. Let's uh, hit a more a few more reloads and yeah, I'll, sure. uh, I'll do my deal. Since we don't have a shot timer out here, I'll be your shot timer. You're going to be you're going to be the beep. I'm really good at this. Cuz you know I can't shoot without the beep. I can time it perfectly. You're got, down to 100th of a second. I have an algorithm. Well, ca I have well an algorithm calibrated in my head. All right, awesome. Let's do it. Beep. Twelve point three, twelve point three five. <laughs> we have a shot timer. We're just this late, <laughs> and I really, and I really like my joke. All right, here it's, we go. It's over there, but we're not going to get it. <laughs> I like my joke better. Here we go. Better. And stand by. Beep. Well done. Well done. Last one. Try, oh, uh, that was 11.72. Uh, 11.72? 11.72. All right, good. I'm gonna try, uh, try get a, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna push it just a little bit faster. Yes. Yeah, so, 
11 point. All right, here we go. Seven, one. Yep, here we go. Ready, stand by. I'm gonna do my belly button. Beep. All right, Man. cool. All right, you've had your fun. Uh, now we're gonna see what I come up with. Here we go. All right, guys, for mine, draw stroke is really important. It's the most important round of your uh, life is the first round out of the holster. And so that's what I wanna go over uh, right now. I am uh, empty chamber, so nothing there. Full mag, but empty chamber, so that now I can uh, be free to do some dry fire draws. You can get a ton of practice without actually pulling the trigger. So that's what I would do if I didn't have a lot of ammo. I'm gonna dry fire a ton of draws and try to incorporate some basic movement. So first, just warm up the draw stroke, warm up the draw stroke, and then you can add a little bit of movement, which is what I'm gonna do with this guy uh, right here. I'd also do a little safety note, especially when it's uh, cold or wet. Make sure whenever you're concealed carrying, this is real important, always have only one layer of clothes between you and your gun. So say I had a sweater on under here, I would tuck that sweater in behind the gun. Uh, and I have my jacket, so it's always one layer in between me and my gun. If I was gonna take this jacket off before I did so, I would go ahead and untuck that sweater and then I could take my jacket off and no one sees me flashing my gun around. So uh, there you go, but make sure that's happening. Also be real careful of little drawstrings and stuff. My drawstrings are uh, farther back here. This is the jacket we carry on our website. And you notice we've got zips on the side and that allows me for concealed carry. If I want to grab and rip, it's not gonna keep me from being able to get my gun. So that's a side note on what you're wearing. I know it's outside of the scope of this video, but hey, you know what? It's here, I wanna tell you, and that's a real important consideration I wanted you guys to do, cool? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna warm this up and I'm imagining that I turn around and see some uh, dude uh, that has a knife or a lead pipe or something like that, and I'm just gonna execute my draw while moving diagonally offline. I don't wanna run back, I wanna kinda move more diagonally. Got it? Dry fire warming up. Oh no. My fingers are not working because of the cold. <sighs> Another dry fire. Really battling my garment. Cold just changes everything. Awesome. After doing enough of this dry fire, I'll go ahead and go hot. I'm not in a huge hurry. I don't want my 100%, especially when I can't feel my hands, uh, but uh, let's go live. Nice and smooth. <sighs> hands don't work, who cares? Good to go. Let's do it again. Nice hit right here in his head. Good shots. Resetting my garment afterwards. Cool. All right, a uh, couple little uh, teaching notes, considerations. If you're always training in ideal circumstances, you just wouldn't know that, hey, when your hands are wet and cold, they just don't work very well. So trying to defeat garment or getting that good master grip even interacting with the trigger, everything's slower and more likely to screw up. So I'm having to really throttle down and do this right and a little bit slower than I'm used to and I like, but that's just part of training real life, real conditions. And uh, so it's a good teaching point. I like this drill. I'm gonna do a good bit of it with dry fire. But the next thing I wanna harp on is I wanna really uh, wire in those fundamentals tight 
at distance. So I have got my draw stroke online. Now the next thing I'm worried about is what happens if I roll up on some active killer event, whether it's at a school or it's at my church and it's a longer distance and whatever. Now one is I can just warm up my fundamentals and do some more distance shooting. If you don't have the distance, it's fine. All you do is you just like draw something the size of a quarter uh, and try to shoot that at five yards or six or seven yards. And so you can pretend like you have a little bit more distance as a cheap substitute, but not a great, great substitute. Uh, I'm gonna add a little bit more of a challenge by getting my heart rate elevated a little bit to do uh, each rep, and that way I get more per bullet. So I'm gonna do a few burpees and then shoot. And so Paul, you can tell me to do burpees, and then at any point you can say, he's got a gun, and then I'm gonna shoot him. Uh, we're shooting the Ravens at about 40 yards here. Let's call About it right. 85 yards for YouTube. So 115, 80, 120 yards. Uh, so, uh, so I, I paused for just a moment there of like, <laughs> will you celebrate my joke more? But no one did, which made it a classic dad joke. It's something I enjoy it's and other what, dads do. It's not what I do. Get some kids so you'll think I'm funnier. Sorry. All right, I'm, 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 gonna read, I'm gonna do burpees now. Uh, hey, uh, before you ever do burpees or anything like that, you got to make sure you have a good high quality holster, something that's fit and pro uh, proper retention. It's a big deal for this to fall out and make a real bad safety uh, problem. So I'm going to kind of go through this softly anyway. So I'm ready. Here we go. Begin. Hurry up. Let's go. You're weak. You're slow. He's got a gun! Missed that first shot. Oh, that sucks. All right, I want to do more. Pain, the pain. Do more. Do more with less. And I, I, without sh thinking, I mean, I shot four shots. That's, sure. I'm supposed burning, to be just doing ammo. one or two. We're burning ammo. Don't miss the first shot. All right, I'm going to do better this time. More. Begin. Hurry up. Let's go. Don't miss your first round this time. He's got a gun! Nice. Very nice. I like it. Burpees, let's go. Come on. Down up. He's got a gun! Good hit. Nice, nice. There. Now you can do that 50 more times. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't have to be this, but something that gets the heart rate up and allows me to blend some fundamentals. And so this is a little more challenging for me. And so I added this piece, but if I'm gonna do 50 rounds, I'd like to be up close something dynamic fight stuff and then something heart rate up fundamental stuff. So I kind of cover a lot of uh, bases. If I had 100 rounds, I'd probably start doing cover and concealment stuff as well, or swap out something like that for this. But sure. you get to have some fun with training, but this is kind of how I do uh, 50 rounds. I like it. All right, guys, so if we only had 50 rounds to train with, Paul's going one in one drill, allows a lot of uh, stress, skill set development stuff. If you are still working through some of those basic skills, you should probably go toward what he's doing, not what I'm doing. If you feel like your skills are a little bit more solidified and you wanna kind of think about the big pieces of a fight, whether it's heart rate up and fundamentals at more of a reactionary gap or right up on them with a quick draw, uh, then you probably wanna go with more of what I'm doing. So you gotta know you, be honest, but above all, make sure you're training hard, smart, and be safe on this. Guys, make sure you also check out our training page. Paul's come online, I promise you he's an amazing instructor. He wouldn't be with us if he wasn't. So if you want to train with him, sign up on our website. Thanks so much for viewing this. Comment, like, share, subscribe, toggle notifications bell to all. Uh, train hard, train smart, and stay free.